you like to introduce yourself? I'm Charles Eisenstein. All right. So Charles, what do you see the major challenges for humanity to be in the next decade? Well, on a more superficial level, uh, I think everybody knows what the challenges are, the environmental challenges, the political challenges, the social challenges. I'm not saying that those are superficial problems, but other people talk about those, so I'm not going to mention those so much. I think a deeper challenge is to respond to these to these um, to these challenges in a different way, in a different way than we've been used to. Uh, for example, not to respond to violence with more violence or more hatred. I like to say that the revolution that we're part of is a revolution of love. So it's um, and it comes from a different a different understanding of what it is to be human, and and the big challenge is to live from this emerging understanding that's both very ancient and very new, to live from that as we face these challenges. That in itself is, I think, is the most important challenge. Otherwise, our solutions to the problems are going to cause just more problems. I mean, all of our problems today came as a result of the solutions to earlier problems. Technology causes, you know, you solve one problem with technology and it gives birth to many other problems. You solve one problem with a war and it gives birth to new wars. And that's the cycle that it's our challenge to end. What skills and capacities need to be developed to meet these challenges? What skills and capacities need to be developed to meet these challenges? Well, I, mean, I guess I, I talked a little bit about that already. Um, I'd say one capacity would be the capacity to see other people with um, see to see other people as reflections of yourself. So to look at the Wall Street banker and understand what it's like to be the Wall Street banker, and if I were in that situation how would I be doing the same things that that Wall Street banker is doing? That understanding allows us to approach the banker or the warlord or the politician or anybody who's holding power and doing harm in the world. It allows us to approach that person with understanding um, so that we don't need to set that person up as an enemy um, but can uh, find strategies that are inclusive and more effective even and it's especially important when the enemies that we set up are more powerful than we are in conventional ways they have more military force they have more financial force so we're not going to defeat them with force the only way to defeat them is to include them and to to, to say yeah join us in this revolution of love and that, that sounds really naive but I can give you many examples of, of people who had been doing great harm in the world who have um, transformed. And what would you say is the role of youth in all this? The role of youth? Well, for one thing, youth are uh, less immersed in the old ways, these habits that have been around for thousands of years um, are less less powerful in young people because they haven't been molded as much. Uh, an infant doesn't have any of these habits, uh, and and we you know the older we get, the more um, rigid we become in these habits. But young people, they're not so tightly holding on, and they can change much more deeply and much more quickly than older people. You know, we really are at a transition between worlds. And like my generation, I mean, we were born into the old world. Although the new world was beginning to stir. 
But many young people today, they're born not so much in that old world. They're already, it's almost like they already understand the things that it took my generation decades of struggle to understand. And they understand it like that. You know, maybe they understand it after months of struggle, not decades of struggle. So I think that, that they're, yeah, the, the, the young people are the ones who are gonna really put into action all of these things. From hearing you speak, I feel a lot of hope, and I wonder if you could expand a little bit on where that hope comes from. Well, for me, the hope, part of it is, for me, that I see so many amazing young people uh, who are at a place already at age 20 or 22 or 24 where, where similar to where I am now. And I think, wow, where are they going to be when they're 44? Um, I also have hope because in my life I've learned how transformation happens, how change happens. And it happens when an old way of being becomes no longer relevant, it reaches its extreme and it falls apart. And I see that that's what's happening on the planet. And even though the extreme is really scary and it looks like things are worse than ever, it's actually more like a wave that's rearing up high but hollowing out at the same time and about to crash. So I think that what we're undergoing now as, as a species, as a, as a collective, is just a normal part of a transformative process. Thanks so much. Last question. Um, if you were to be dropped on a tropic island, you know the question, <laughs> what would you bring? What would I bring to a desert island? One thing. One thing? Oh, a companion. I would bring a companion. Because, I mean, assuming that, you know, I could figure out how to eat, maybe the island has lots of fruits and lots of food and water. Like, what do we need the most? You know, we need each other. So I would bring a companion. Thanks so much. Thanks. So I was wondering whether you could say anything about Yip, about oh, what yeah. you've experienced here this week. Um, well, I experienced more than I expected. Even though I was expecting to experience more than I expected, I still experienced more than I expected. Um, there's wasn't all easy. Um, I definitely went through a process myself. You know, I didn't. I wasn't like the teacher who comes and delivers his thing and isn't affected. You know, because he's already got it figured out at all. Like, it was a learning edge for me. And I'm going to go home and and process it and speak to wise people that I know to get the help that I need to, to process it so that I can be more effective and move on to new learning edges in the future. It's a wonderful place, Yip. It's a, it feels like it's kind of one of the power centers of the Earth. Not in the old sense of a power center like Wall Street, but kind of a love power center. Thank you.